Today, I'm gonna blend a couple of things that I like into one video, camera gear and cruising. You might be wondering what kind of camera gear you need to take with you on a cruise. Whether you're planning to explore exotic destinations, enjoy onboard activities, or just relax and enjoy the views, you wanna make sure that you've got the right equipment to capture those moments. There are two things I think a lot of people would pack that I wouldn't, and you might be surprised to hear what they are later. The first thing you're going to need is a camera body that suits your budget and experience level. You can choose between a DSLR like this one or a mirrorless camera I'm shooting with here, a camcorder or even a point and shoot. It's all up to you. I'm a little bit of a camera nerd, but I find that the DSLRs and mirrorless cameras are actually really versatile ways to go because you can shoot stills and you can shoot video all in the one package. Nowadays a lot of point and shoots can do the same thing but you just don't get the same quality or performance as you would with a DSLR or a mirrorless camera. I've personally had several different iterations of cameras started with a Canon Vixia camcorder, Canon Rebel T3i, Canon 90D, EOS R6, and now the EOS R6 Mark II. This EOS R6 Mark II is a fantastic camera and it's way more camera than I need and more than most people would need for photographing and videoing your cruise. Let's talk about lenses. I mean, not this one, because it's a cup. I used to find it pretty difficult to figure out what lenses to take with me. I didn't want to find myself on a ship in a great place and not have the right focal length or the right aperture to get the shot that I wanted. But who am I kidding? I'm not a photographer or a videographer. I have no idea what shot I'm gonna want. I personally don't like carrying a lot of lenses around because they're not super light, I don't wanna damage them, and I've got enough stuff to pack already. So I find I pretty much wanna figure out what my most versatile lens is when it comes to focal length. And for me on the last cruise, it was the Canon 24 to 105 f4 now to be honest this lens is not cheap and i actually got it in a kit with this camera body but it is by far the most versatile lens that i own it starts out at 24 millimeters which is nice and wide and zooms all the way to 105 millimeters which is fantastic for shooting like birds flying other ships or zooming down and getting the people walking as they're getting off the ship and since cruise ships can be kind of tight sometimes joint. i did like taking the secondary lens which is the 16 millimeter f 2.8 that's on this body right now it's super wide filming or taking pictures in your cabin since it's tighter quarters or this style of shooting where you're vlogging and you want to be within reach of the camera but it is severely limited because it's a prime lens so if i only could choose one it would be the 24 to 105 because it's just so freaking versatile if you happen to own a crop sensor camera like one of the canon rebel series then i would recommend something like an 18 to 55 which is a really common kit lens or you could look at the 18 to 135 again that's going to be super versatile as far as the focal length and the zoom capabilities which is what i think is most important when choosing lenses for travel another type of camera that you may want to take with you on your cruise would be an action cam like a gopro it's tiny it's versatile it's durable it's waterproof and it shoots in 4k actually actually this one i believe shoots in 5k this camera can't do that these gopros are super handy if you're ziplining kayaking snorkeling riding a horse on the beach I mean, any activity where you don't want to take this bulky and more expensive camera. So usually when I get off a ship, this is my vlog camera right here. I'm walking around holding this thing. This thing is actually even stabilized. So as I'm walking around, it's staying locked on the horizon and keeping me very stable in the frame. There's so many attachments these days too. You can attach these things to your head, your chest, your arm, uh, or keep it on the selfie stick. This one actually doubles as a tripod base so that's pretty cool if you have one that's not waterproof you'll need a waterproof case to use it for snorkeling and looking at the fish under the water if you're into that sort of thing i personally am and i don't have it on here right now but i actually do have another handle that is orange on the bottom and it's made out of a material that'll float with a little wrist strap and so if you're in the ocean floating around if you drop the camera it's tethered to your wrist and then if it happens to come off it actually will float upside down bob around in the water and you can see the the orange tip bobbing around. My baby, take care of all my babies. More gear that you're gonna to wanna to pack for your cruise includes accessories and extra things and stuff. It's not a very technical video. For instance, for your camera, you're probably gonna want some sort of strap. I did not take a strap with me on the last trip and I'll tell you why. The strap that Canon provides 
kind of sucks. And it's really annoying to try to put it into the little things and then take it off because I don't always want a camera strap on my camera. If I'm walking around on the ship on deck, it's nice to have the camera strap and I can let it rest and pick it up to use it. But I like to also take my camera into more intimate settings like a dining room or a lounge and I don't want to be you know, sitting with it around my neck at the dinner table or have this big bulky strap hanging off of it when I set it down, it's a little much. I just figured out to get a strap that has the quick disconnect system. So my new strap literally has two little tabs and it just releases right off of these permanently attached thingies on the camera. That's a fantastic thing. If you do have a mirrorless or DSLR camera, you probably want to take some filters. And if you're new to cameras and stuff or new to cruising, you may not realize exactly what kind of filters you'll need and why. I have a touch of OCD, so I buy things called UV filters and attach to the lens on every lens that I own. The UV filter doesn't do any image adjustment that I can really tell, but what it does for me, it provides a barrier between the harsh elements and the glass of the lens. If I get this UV filter dirty or scratched, I can unscrew it, throw it away, put on another one. If that happens to the lens, they're screwed. Another type of filter I like to take is a variable ND filter, and it's basically like sunglasses for your lens, and that way you can run your camera with different settings than you normally would be able to do outside because the sun is so bright. If you look through there, you can see me through the thing, but as I turn it, you see it gets darker. Variable ND filters, super cool. I even have a set of ND filters that attach to the GoPro. They just clip on to the, uh, the camera lens. Super handy stuff. And as far as filters go, a lot of people swear by circular polarizers. They say that they're handy in you know, cutting down reflections and glares and stuff, especially when you're filming or photographing water. I've never owned any, so I don't know. You're also gonna need plenty of memory cards. Don't forget your memory cards at home and don't try to go and take just the one because I have literally been filming and got a notification that the memory card was full. I also went to North Carolina one time and was going to film in the mountains with my drone. Didn't take a memory card. So get a few good memory cards of the right size and speed to work with your camera. Make sure you pack them. Batteries, extra batteries, cables, all of those things kind of should be a given, but don't forget to pack them. Speaking of packing, let's talk about bags. I have used this very simple, very inexpensive Canon camera bag for years. And the thing I like about it is it has compartments and adjustable things and, and all of the stuff fits in there quite nice. Well, it used to. The problem was I've got more stuff than I have bag space. So this thing is getting retired and I'm literally waiting for my new bag to arrive any day now. I also like to make sure that I pack a couple of lens cleaning cloths and things like that. You really don't want to underestimate how much salt water and sandy gook is just gonna stick to the front of your lens and ruin everything. Now I mentioned there were two things that a lot of people probably pack that I do not take with me on a cruise. One of them being a tripod. I'm not really a tripod kind of guy. I'm more of a run and gun. I'm using a tripod right now, but when I'm traveling, I find it easier to just run and gun. Another thing that I think some people probably at least think about taking would be a drone. I personally really love my DJI Mini 2 and it's been with me a lot of places and I've wrecked it into a lot of trees and gotten it rained on, but it still works. And I would totally take it on a cruise. The problem is most cruise lines will not let you bring a drone. And though Carnival Cruise Lines will let you bring one, you have to give it to them and check it out when you want to use it. And you're only allowed to use it in a port and there are all kinds of rules and regulations and things that I just don't want to worry about. It would make for awesome shots and I may give it a whirl at some point, but it's not something I'm going to take with me on every cruise. Too much trouble. Well, that's my guide for what camera gear you should take with you on your cruise vacation. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, leave them in a comment down below. Please don't forget to like the video, subscribe to my channel, click the notification bell, all of the things to make sure that we stay connected together. I don't know what that was about. Let's not do that again, but I'll see you next time.